baby. Hello, babe. Hello, baby. Hello, everybody. Who is ready to rock? I'm ready to rock. You're ready to rock. And the podcast will rock. That's right. We are your show that goes into the discography, the catalog of one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, Van Halen. We are rocking and rolling. The the power's going out over here. It's all good. We're still uh, kicking. At least I am, anyway. This is one of your hosts, Mark Kameyer. With me, as always, Corey Morissette. You still got power? I do. Uh, and actually, yeah, uh, I have power, shockingly, because the power goes out here all the time. It went out for a couple hours on Christmas. That was lovely. Uh, but uh, oh, fun. The, the power is on. Uh, everything's pumping. Uh, we got a ton of new listeners listening to the show. So I just want to thank everybody for, for tuning in and for engaging with us on Twitter and, uh, you know, checking out the show and leaving those reviews and those, you know, especially on Apple Podcasts, there, anytime you can leave us a, a decent review and give us a, a star rating, that's much, much appreciated. It's going to help us grow. And I just want to give a special shout out to all the great podcasts on the Deep Dive uh, Podcasting Network. Uh, if you actually go to our website now, uh, podcastwillrock.com, uh, we have uh, all their links on there. We have their Twitter feed along with our Twitter feed uh, embedded in there as well. And we have merch. Mark, we finally have some merch. Actually, I put it in order yesterday. Got some podcast little rock t-shirts coming my way. The girls got some hoodies coming. Uh, so if you like the show and you like the logo and you want to wear it about and help spread the word, we sure appreciate it. We'll give you a shout out on the show. And Mark will show up at your house too and maybe mow your lawn. Now it feels professional. Now that there's <laughs> merch, there's a website, that's that's what we aim for. Yeah, I'll, I'll come over, maybe not mow your lawn, but I will serenade you with a song or two. Maybe it'll be a Van Halen song, Ooh. just acoustically, and then uh, you get to pick whether you want a Roth-era tune or a Hagar-era tune, and I will either gladly accept it or tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There are no wrong answers here, not at all, but... You guys know how this show works. We just talk about a song randomly. We spin the wheel. We have a wheel that has all the Van Halen tracks on it. We have no idea which one we talk about. Sometimes they are really awesome, popular tracks that we all know, we all love. Sometimes not so much. Sometimes it's a complete surprise, and that can either be on the yay side or the nay side. And here lately, we've sort of been uh, kind of up and down with the yays and nays. Um and not only that, but we are having people that are getting involved in the conversation, aren't we, Corey? We absolutely are. The last two weeks, uh, Mark and I have been split. Uh, the last week was uh, learning to see Mark liked it. Uh, I did not. Uh, and it, it sparked a little bit of a conversation on Twitter this week with a couple of our uh, couple of our listeners. And I want to give special shout outs to these uh, these gentlemen, Joel Scott Zerns and Will Leinert. Uh, we're we're kind of having a little back and forth about who the better songwriter is. I know Joel... Uh, kind of took to Mark saying Sammy's the better songwriter and said, uh, hold on a second here. Van Halen's most successful period uh, was when David Lee Roth was running the band. And then Will Leonard said, uh, hold on here. Actually, uh, you know, you're looking at most uh, Billboard Rock singles. That's Hagar. Uh, yeah, total albums goes to David Lee Roth, but a lot of those albums were sold during the Hagar era, actually. And some of those David Lee Roth albums weren't that successful. So even though you have the two Diamond albums, from David Lee Roth, uh, you know, Hagar, you know, all of their albums, uh, you know, 3 million plus, uh, you know, tr you know, three times platinum uh, with a 5150, I believe six or seven times platinum. So uh, a real back and forth. And I think when, when Mark and I were talking about who's the better songwriter, it's more musically whose taste do we kind of align with? I, you know, when you're looking at it empirically, mm -hmm. uh, I'm ready to call it a draw because David Lee Roth sold a ton of albums. Sammy Hagar sold a ton of albums. They're both really popular, different times. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different factors. I really enjoy them both. For me, I love double entendres. Yep. I love witty lyrics. Bon Scott is probably my favorite lyricist of all time. And I, I, I equate David Lee Roth more to the Bon Scott side of lyric writing. So that's why I gravitate towards David Lee Roth, whereas Mark... I'm much more of a tortured soul. He likes the love songs. He likes the, the weepy ballads. He enjoys the Sammy Hagar stuff, and that's okay. 
What can I say? I'm a weepy bastard, and weepy bastards love weepy bastard music. It's just the way it goes. And uh, and a lot of the time, a lot of the things I say when I go about who I think is the uh, the more achieved or better songwriter, if you were, a lot of it's opinion based. You guys, it's just opinions. It's fine. Um, but also check the record sales, and I guess we're all looking at different sources here, and different sources will claim different things. But look. All in all, all this to say, it's a fun discussion because in the end, there's no winner because we're all winners exactly. because Van Halen is Van Halen. That's it's just it's a band. It's a team effort. And we're a part of that team, whether we know it or not, as the as the uh, the fan community of this band. That's why this podcast exists. That's why you guys listen. That's why you follow. That's why we're here to just celebrate it. It's just fun to, uh, you know poke and prod over uh what the hell david lee roth is talking about sometimes <laughs> like a song like honey baby sweetie doll that's i loved his lyrics in that i know mark wasn't a fan but i but i dug it and like you said we're all winners we got two <laughs> tremendous eras of music with david lee roth and sammy Hagar, and we got a bonus gary sharon album thrown in there for good measure which uh, <laughs> oh, oh right that <laughs> the one song we have off that album wasn't very good but i know there's good stuff on there and i'm looking forward to getting to that uh, but before we do mark we kind of accidentally uh started a, a recurring segment uh on the show uh in, in that uh, mm -hmm. we're going through a particularly brutal winter uh, up here in canada and even in in tennessee you had uh, almost a, an eighth of an inch of snow and it completely shut the state down, I hear. <laughs> uh, we've had four feet of snow here forever. We just had another blizzard uh, on Tuesday. But I thought I, I should maybe do up a, a little intro uh, for our weekly weather report. So if it's okay with you, you've never heard this, uh, I'd like to play it for you here. Mm. Play it. Let me enlighten you people. This baby has satellite comely. We got onboard Paul Stoppler. We got next rad real time. Today, we're going to make history. So stick around. The days of sniffing the dirt are over. Oh, and by the way, I really enjoy your weather reports. <laughs> <laughs> you slime! Oh, I'm not doing you yet! Come on! Come here! Come on! Come on! Come on! Get your hands off of me! Come on! Get back on! Hey! I gotta go, Julia. We got cows! That's right. We got cows and we got the end. The podcast will rock weather report. Uh, first, let, let me give you the, the weather report up here in Canada. Uh, it was a warm one. Everybody was walking around in shirt sleeves. Minus 26 today uh, up here in Canada, which uh, for you folks in the States is minus 14. So uh, much better uh, than it has been here in Canada. It's actually been warming up as the evening has been going on. We're about minus 13 right now. So we're, we're coming out of a, a deep cold that, that it kind of uh, enveloped Canada here. So um, uh, we're breathing a little easier up here. How are you dealing with the horrific weather conditions in Tennessee, my friend? Well, now that you mention it, uh, the roads did ice over today. We were in the uh, low 20s Fahrenheit. Um, a little bit of snow just as sort of like, uh, like I don't know, someone sneezed and, and uh, here's some snow. Jack Frost sneezed. Um, but it was ice. We had ice today. Uh, but still not as bad because everyone went to work. Everyone got on the roads and uh, just kind of gave it hell. So, you, you know, not so bad, but let me tell you something. This is a true story. I haven't even told Corey this. The other day, we had a fire drill at work. Uh, to skip ahead, turns out, wasn't a fire drill. There was a fire, a little <laughs> small one. But we were outside uh, of, the, of, of the, the office, the warehouse, for a really long time. And uh, I didn't grab a coat because I thought, oh, it's a drill. We'll be in and out. It's fine. The sun's out. It's cold, but we'll be okay. It was not okay. Um, I I uh, froze, and I was not happy about it. So, look, Canada weather be damned. I, I It's not for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the coldness. I don't do well in winter, especially when I'm stuck outside for what I thought was no reason. There was a reason, but I had no coat on. Don't go outside without your coats, people. It's still January, and that means something in certain parts of the world. So, you know, that happened at my um, daughter's yeah. school uh, this week when it was minus 26. Uh, they had a small fire in this brand new school, and they were rushed outside. They had time to grab a coat, but that was about it. They were on in their inside shoes, and there's, like I mentioned, four feet of snow. So they uh, they, they were soaked from, like, the knees down. 
uh, for the entire day after that. It, it's no fun being cold. And I know I, I, I kind of mock the Tennessee weather because my, you know, in the twenties doesn't sound that bad, but when you're not used to it, it is that bad. And it's still chilly. You still need a coat and all that. And icy roads are not fun for anyone. No, no, no. Especially when you're on the roads for a certain length of time uh, in a given day, it's really not fun. But uh, but I'd rather I'd rather just be uncomfortable than be up to my knees in um, wet snow. So I feel for your daughter and I feel for the people of Saskatchewan <laughs> because that's that's bad. But you know what? We're warm. We're indoors. We have the Wheel of Rock all queued up. I got my whiskey going. I feel like uh, the ladies' man. I got my Cavatier. I got my Wiser Special Blend Ooh. and my Coke Zero. And I'm ready to spin this fucker and get a decent tune because we didn't get a Van Halen song last week. We got Learning to See and it was dog shit. Let's get something good this week. I will have you know, I got quite a thrill from that track, as <laughs> the listeners will know. Uh, if you don't know, go back and listen to that song. I, I All of you, I want to I hear from you. Tell me if I'm wrong or tell me, you know what? We agree with Mark. That's not a bad track. Well, you know, um, and I put a poll up, actually. Yeah, in- I, I put a poll up after the episode. I'm yeah. going to start doing this uh, every week. What was your take on the song? 55% said it sucked, but 44% said they liked it. They rocked. So there, there's more people on your side than I thought. And surprisingly, your girlfriend is not one of them. No, no. Uh, the uh, <laughs> My beloved Christy was uh, not a fan. Not a fan of this track. I thought perhaps she would see my side of things this time around she did not she was all team Corey. she she specifically name dropped team Corey. she said i'm sorry i'm team Corey on this one that that song's awful you know what i'm getting a shirt made up i'm putting it in the merch store it's gonna say team Corey. we'll get team Corey and team mark shirts uh my wife was also she listened to our show for the first time uh because she had a day off and she listened to that episode and all she texted me at the end was fuck that song so uh that's three against one which kind of surprises me the cheese stands alone. That's about right. Uh, I am the forty-four percent on the Twitter poll. It turns it's it's all me. It's all me. I have multiple accounts. Um, but hey, no worries. It's all good. It, they they can't all be winners. Let's hope tonight is a winner. Uh, do you have any hopes? Anything in particular that uh, you want the wheel to spin? We know that the wheel is fickle about that sort of thing. But if you just had to listen to a particular Van Halen track of a certain era, what would it be? You know what? I was uh, writing to work today and I was uh, listening to a lot of David Lee Roth. I don't, I try not to load up Van Halen because I want it to be fresh for the show, but I was listening to Eat Him and Smile, mm-hmm. which I, I love that album. I really want to kick and Dave too, but I, I want something a little harder. Like you listen to that album, you got Steve Vai on guitar. There's some really good rockers on that. I'm like, give me something from women and children first. Kind of that harder edge mm. or, or anything from the first three albums uh, with David Lee Roth. I'm kind of in the mood for, or even if it's going to be a Sammy track, give me something rocking. You know, give me best of both worlds. Get me pound cake, something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm in the mood to kind of rock out tonight. Mm. How about you? Absolutely. I'm always in the mood to rock out, but you know what? I think I'm with you on this one. I would not be mad if the wheel decided, uh, let's go back to Van Halen one or two. Let's just, uh, let's, let's just get our rock on. Uh, but we shall see. As I said, the wheel is fickle. Let's see if the fickle mistress wants to come out. All right. I'm giving her a shuffle. So this is episode 10 of 120. So we only have 110 to go. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's just very small uh, at this point. We were actually chatting with some of the other... Well, as the Smiths once, <laughs> as the Smiths once said, there is a light that never goes out. Um, but that's a different podcast. It's fine. That's right. Okay. A couple more shuffles. We're going to take it over to Mr. Hagar, and we're going to get this sucker spinning. Here we go! Right, here we go. Coming down. Well, we're getting something from 5150. Oh. Oh. Inside. Oh. And you know what? We were very actually the next song, and folks can't see this. I might actually post the, the video of the wheel spin. We almost got 5150 itself, which would have been awesome. And and one of our super fans, that Brett Cooper, that's awesome. his favorite Van Halen song. He wants to come on the show and talk 5150. We almost got rid of it on the wheel here for him tonight, but instead it landed on Inside uh, from 5150. This was the last track, I believe, off of 5150. Uh, Mark, do you have any recollections of this one? I know that I've jammed it. I know that uh, I, you know, spoiler alert, I do enjoy the song, or at least I did. Um, but 
it's still it's still far enough to where if we listen to it now i think it will be pretty fresh and i like to think that we're looking at it through a fresh perspective anyway so yeah 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 i'm i'm excited to revisit this because i know this particular track it's been a long time i don't often uh, if i'm gonna jam a van halen album 5150 is usually not my go-to uh but it, but i if i'm gonna hit shuffle then i expect to hear a few tracks from this album um this one might be one of them yeah um i, I do rock 5150 quite a bit it's one of my favorite sammy albums um but uh inside is not one that i i i it, in on the depending on my mood on the day that may be one i skip if it comes up on shuffle you know i'm mm-hmm. listening to why yeah. can't this be love or dreams or summer nights or best of both worlds uh but you know inside is maybe one i skip so perfectly valid yeah so uh mm-hmm. so this is what i'm looking forward to because i hadn't heard it in a while and uh you know i'm kind of interested to see how it comes off this is i think one of the stronger sammy albums of course coming right off the heels of 1984 released in 1985 uh it was uh, the most successful uh sammy era album uh for for van halen uh, it's been uh registered six times platinum uh so that's six million copies in the states and canada uh three times platinum united kingdom it went silver uh 60 000, uh units sold uh no numbers on thailand which of course we are very big in thailand uh so i gotta point I that out it. that there are no record numbers for 5150 in thailand but we'll try and dig that up for those folks at some point shout out to our thai listeners I haven't figured out how to say hello in in Thai yet. I'll get I'll get. There. We'll, we'll get. We we got time. We got 110 episodes to go, man. Like we got lots of time. We do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you know, 5150. Uh, you know, it was recorded uh, November uh, 1985 uh, into February of '86. Sorry, released in 1986, not '85. I was mistaken there. It has that classic cover art, right? Where you have like Atlas lifting the globe. Atlas, yeah, and you have the. The V, the Van Halen logo, the new logo with the wraparound, the kind of the look that we incorporated for our logo with the wraparound wings. Um, this was actually uh, I, I recently started collecting vinyl, and this was the first Van Halen album I got on vinyl, and I just uh, it, it's always kind of stuck out to me uh, when I was a kid. Of course, 80, 1984 was my introduction to Van Halen, so fifty one fifty came next. So that was one of the first albums I picked up. Uh, you know, collecting music as a youngster up here in Canada. And I just remember really being enthralled with it. So uh, our first 5150 song, uh, I'm very excited. It it hit number one on the Billboard chart, this album. Uh, This song, of course, was never released as a single. Um, So I don't really know much about it. Uh, What do you say? Maybe we just get into it. I think we should. Let's rock out to some 5150, our first track of the album. All right, here's a little Inside. All right, so right off the hop, we got <laughs> we got a little smoke and word section that was quite nice, and a little funky bass line from Mr. Michael Anthony going there. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I, I kind of dug how this kicked off. What did you think? <laughs> Much like the commentary is like, well, what is this? This is like, but it, instead of uh, they're sort of like uh, sort of sticking their nose up at it as as it sounds like uh yeah i'm absolutely digging it you know what that it gives me a little bit of a peter gabriel vibe Ooh. is it am i crazy in thinking that it's just kind of like the aesthetic of just the way that introduction started like 80s gabriel sounds like something yeah yeah, yeah, like, so yeah, era, like, yeah. like so yeah no I I, I I i don't know why i don't know why that thought about that but yeah but it had kind of that electronic sound to it too almost right that bass sounded like it was processed quite a bit it wasn't just a Oh yeah, yeah. He's it, it. He almost. It almost sounds like he's got it through like a uh, like a synthesizer or maybe just uh, an effects pedal that gives the uh, sort of sound of that with the bass. Uh, I'm not sure, but yes, that's it's that electronic sound that <laughs> gave me Gabriel vibes. And we should point out, uh, Ted Templeman, a uh, longtime uh, Van Halen producer, did not produce Fifty One Fifty. Don Landy took over producer duties here. Um, he was the engineer on the previous Van Halen album, so he got promoted to producer on this one. So uh, already a kind of a different sound than what you got from uh, Van Halen in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, and you're getting more of an electronic sound, maybe, you know, which was kind of the style at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was just about to say, it's like it, that's sort of uh, their way of 
uh, blending into what was happening uh, in, in popular rock music. Yeah. All right, let, let's keep going here. Okay, so uh, interesting, uh, and lyrically interesting. I went out and bought some brand new shoes. Now I walk like someone else. Is that maybe alluding to filling uh, some diamond studded shoes from the previous lead singer of Van Halen? I mean, it's a bit on the nose, yeah. But <laughs> why not? Yeah, you know, why not? He's it's, Sammy's making a statement. The whole band is making a statement with this. Uh, that's that's what they're doing. They're they're, they're talking throughout the track. <laughs> the music's playing and uh, everyone's talking, making commentary uh, through the studio, uh, um, almost as if they're not aware until someone's uh, their producer uh, says, "Go, go, do it to sing the song." Like, oh right, right, right. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that's exactly what that is. Now, um, this this almost feels like this is the end of the album let's just throw some filler on there like it, it doesn't feel like it's a cohesive it kinda, thought it does like because yeah. you have them chatting uh throughout the beginning they're saying stuff like uh hey yeah uh, i don't know man we're dying we're dying you got a point there this is fat you actually got three points there oh yeah hey what where do you get that clothes like none of this shit really makes any sense right it just feels like they, they had a groove they're they're just kind of throwing whatever the hell they want on there as kind of a we need a a tenth song to finish off the album type thing. <laughs> Could be that we've uh, we've talked about on the show a couple of times how we feel how some of these tracks come together, uh, especially some of the Roth tunes. Sort of feels like uh, well we have this. Uh, I don't know, Dave. What, what do you got? You got anything? Like uh, give me like uh, ten minutes. It's like yeah okay, and the and the effort sometimes shows. This kind of sounds like uh, we have uh, we have the bass line. We we Alex throw some throw some drums onto it. You know Eddie can figure out the rest. Uh, and maybe perhaps I was actually thinking I had to double check. I went did does this sound, is this the intro song to fifty one fifty? Because I didn't think it was, but it almost to me sounded like it could have been an intro really? uh, track. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe just uh, from the context of the lyrics and the way they're presenting the structure of the song with the chatting, uh, the you know the over commentary over the music, kind of uh, going I don't know, whatever, like whatever. It's like oh, we're getting our shit together before we actually kick this thing off. Um, but as I said, I double checked and I went, no, it's not the opening track, and that's and I knew that, but for some reason in my brain, it kind of registered that it could have been. But I think it's more what you said. I think it's one of those, we've got this, should we throw it in? Yeah, okay, we'll we'll figure it out along the way. Yeah, it's like we we got this groove. We have eight songs done. We need a ninth uh, to finish off side two of the album. Let's just fuck whatever, right? Whatever comes to mind, just scat it out there. And we'll put some shit to it. But, it's, you know, the, the groove is decent enough. You know, I like Michael. I always liked Mike, Michael Anthony as a bass player. And, you know, he's got a good groove mm-hmm. going here. You know, Alex is, you know, they're right in the pocket, it kind of seems like. But yeah, as an opening song, especially the first song you're going to introduce the world to your new lead singer with after David Lee Roth, this would have been a tremendous mistake, I think, maybe coming out with this one. Uh, 51, oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, 5150 opens with a song called Good Enough, which is... Uh, uh, a, a lot yeah. more, I think, uh, custom to, to be the lead-off track uh, uh, to this album, whereas this one just feels like a, 
fuck it we got you know five minutes we got to kill here on the end of this uh, record Let, let's just do whatever and lyrically that, that's kind of what we're getting here now I'm, I'm really curious to hear what the guitar solo is going to sound like what eddie puts on this but you know right now the, the oh, band is feeling good i'm not really liking the production so much it feels very electronic which i don't like in my van halen they're a very straight ahead rock group they don't need all this processing and shit but well we'll see where it goes yeah they don't play they don't play electric instruments at all. No, no, they do, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. It's <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just being an ass. I don't want Peter Gabriel uh, in my Van Halen. If that helps, just like I don't <laughs> want Soundgarden in my Van Halen. I want Van Halen in my Van Halen. Uh, I knew it was going to come back to that, <laughs> but that's that's fair. That's fair. You de- you don't want your Peter Gabriel in your Van Halen. That's, that's right. That's very fair. You, you put your peanut butter on my chocolate. Okay, let, let's keep listening here. Well, that's. <laughs> Okay, did, did you hear that? Uh, underneath the... I, I couldn't make... <laughs> he's, he's literally saying, hey, 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 don't touch me there, okay? Just don't do that, okay? Oh, why? Just pay my accountant. <laughs> I didn't hear the just pay my accountant part, but I heard everything else, and I was going like, wait, what's what's it, what's happening what? here? What? Really? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things uh, vocally that Sammy is doing that I'm going, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what, what's, I don't I don't recall this at all. Like I'm I'm just, now I'm starting to think, did I ever jam this song whatsoever? I don't know. Uh, not ringing a lot of bells. Uh, uh, there was oh, there was something. Oh, right, right. So. I think one thing you might not like about this is Sammy has a lot of vocal reverb uh, put on this for for whatever reason. It's like he told the producer, just turn the reverb all the way up. And for those not in the know, uh, the reverb is the sound effect that makes you sound all echoey. So he's that's why he sounds like he's in a tunnel. Uh, Reverb is is used it's it's a common uh uh effect used on every single album that you've ever listened to even if it's very subtle that's the beauty of it if you some people want it so subtle that it's not there uh some just don't want it at all but when you're in a studio space you're always going to get it it's it's just the way it is uh and then there are people that say to hell with it crank it as high as it'll go so i literally sound like i'm in a in an echo chamber and uh, that's what this sounds like. And Sammy doesn't need to be in an echo chamber. Like he he doesn't uh, his his voice doesn't need the extra help. He's he's fine on his own. It's we know this. I don't know why in this particular song, uh, it's not like it's helping anything whatsoever. But yeah, it just sounds like they threw Sammy in a tunnel, gave him a microphone, and is like, "We got you. Just just go." And maybe that's why he sounds so confused. I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe is is that what's bothering you about this? It overproduced is the word that, that that comes to mind. This track feels like it's overproduced. There, yeah. That and I, I get it. Almost sounds like Sammy's trying to be the comedian a little bit, being a little bit funny, tongue in cheek about being the replacement for this band. Where, but Dave played that role so well, right? Uh, that. He, he mm-hmm. doesn't quite reach those David Lee Roth heights. Maybe j- just stick to being, you know, straight down the center. You don't have to be wilder than Dave. You don't have to be funnier than Dave. You just be Sammy. And this track feels like he's kind of veering off mm-hmm. that a little bit. But, and maybe th- th- that's what eating at me. That and, you know, if you got a, a first time uh, producer, I don't know if this was his first album, but he was an engineer on the other Van Halen albums. Mm-hmm. It, it just feels overproduced like you're trying too hard. Like you got Van fucking Halen just plug in some amps and go. You like the, that was kind of the magic of those early albums. Ted Templeman knew how to produce this band. Uh, whereas this fella mm-hmm. just, just feels like he's tacking on maybe a little too much shit and, and overproducing it a bit. 
Yeah, that could be a thing. I wonder if uh, I wonder how much input the band had. Um, well, I bet you Eddie had a lot in the production side of it. So, I mean, I'm not trying to throw blame or anything at uh, at Eddie, but I'm I'm wondering. I said, well, did did you approve of this? Um, th- w- or was this was this your call to just kind of uh, go in a weird direction? I'm in- I'm inclined to think maybe Sammy had something to say about it, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, right away. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm with. I am with you on this. I think it it does sound overproduced. So I'm not really digging what's happening right now. <laughs> well, let let's see if the uh, the solo can can save it here. Let's. It could save let's it. It could it. save it. We still got a ways to go. By the way, it's we still got almost three minutes to go. Like this is a long damn song. Oh, it's a five long minute song. song. Oh, like, gee whiz. <laughs> okay, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Hold thing. Oh, Okay, so he, the, the the band was singing, that's what's coming down. And then Sammy says, on my butt anyway. Hey, hey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. I think I've, I just took a gander at the lyrics and listening to uh, uh, the track, like going along with it. I think I figured it out. They, they're at the end of this thing. They're ready to close it out. And they are just wasted. <laughs> so they, there was no, I mean, maybe they, uh, uh, Sammy came up with the, uh, with the catchy phrases, uh, you know, the, the, the part that you hear singing, uh, maybe, maybe he came up with that. Maybe the hooks are, are him, but the rest of it is just him screaming at the other guys in the band and then them like talking back at him. Like there's even one there, there's a line where he even says, uh, "Eddie, can't you read lips?" I came into this thing with an open mind. <laughs> it almost sounds like he's arguing with the guys. Uh, he's like airing out the dirty laundry while this track is playing. It's probably by design, but at the same time, it almost feels like, uh, did you guys know you were being recorded <laughs> right now? Because I don't. What's happening? It's such a weird lyric. Um, and then after that, yeah. you have Mike, Mike, what was that shit you gave me last night? And Mike was probably the straightest right, guy right. in the band. Which... <laughs> like what? <laughs> That's like Mike's playing playing that groovy uh, uh, bass line. He's just going, what the hell are you talking about? He's like, Mike, about? what did what? you give me last night? <laughs> no, Diet Coke? That. Like, it's Michael Anthony. He wasn't the, the big drug <laughs> or booze guy. He's like, he probably gave you a Diet Coke and some Twizzlers. Like, it wasn't... <laughs> Despite the fact that he played a bass where the body was in the shape of a Jack Daniels bottle. That's right. God love that bass. Okay, well, let, let's keep going with this thing. We're, we're over halfway through now. Oh, boy. Okay, I, I just I, I had to look this up because I was listening to that and like Eddie's right, he's on both channels. And I always thought older Van Halen, he was always on like the left side. Like it was almost like a, a concert, right? Yep. He was always on the left side. And in this mm-hmm. one here, he's on both channels. And I thought that was kind of weird. And so uh, while we're listening to that solo, I'm looking it up on Wikipedia and sure enough, uh, yeah, for, for the first time, um, you know, it, it, Eddie's right down the middle instead of being panned to one side and... Uh, it was kind of strange. I don't know if I like that. What did you think? <laughs> um, I hadn't even thought about that until you just mentioned it. And I said like, Oh my God, you're, you're right. Because I specifically have memories where I, uh, with my Walkman listening to Van Halen, best of volume one, uh, and Eddie's right there in the left, like every time. 
And I always, you know, when I, in my younger days, I was thinking, was that a mistake? Like, <laughs> uh, did they mean to do that? Uh, it's supposed to, you're supposed to hear it all. Uh, you know, you grow up and then you realize like, no, 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 that's, it's, it's by design. Um, but yeah, here he's right in the middle. He's, he's everywhere. And, um, you're saying this is the first time that this is, this is happening. Yeah, well, apparently, uh, I mean, I'm getting just reading on Wikipedia here, like this album. Yeah. On this album, he was not a fan of the live mix that Ted Templeman used to do. Uh, with the David Lee Roth uh, version of the band. So, uh, but th- it kind of changed the sound oh. too, which I think a lot of people kind of, you know, they're used to that Eddie Van Halen sound and coming out the left side, all of a sudden it's coming out of both speakers mm-hmm. and the sound has changed. You know, that might be disconcerting uh, for some longtime Van Halen fans. Yeah, but I can get why he would want to change yeah. that. As a guitar player, it's you would like to be right in like... the middle of the mix. Yeah, like you, you want to be, you want to be all throughout the mix like even if you're not playing you still want your presence known um yeah maybe he just uh well he just said he wasn't a fan of the uh sort of live mix as it were but i get it but it does it does somewhat lose a little bit of the uh van halen charm especially if you are used to hearing it a certain way to me it though it sounds when he's in the middle like this it, it sounds fuller like uh like in a full full stadium, um, maybe that's just me, but uh, and maybe that's what he was going for. I don't know, but I I, I can get. Well, it. What did you think of the solo? He would, like uh, overall, be a fan. Of. I really dug the solo. It wasn't. Um, it's not. I don't think it's his best solo. Uh, I don't. His best solo is probably, uh, you know, eruption or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it's so easy to go there, but I mean, like. That's a pretty damn good solo. This was good. It served the song. My problem is I don't think this solo is saving the song. Uh, how did you feel about uh, it? Exactly that, actually. Uh, I like that it wasn't too busy. It, it fit kind of the parameters mm-hmm. of the song. But like you, I'm kind of like, yeah, it doesn't elevate it. Uh, sometimes a good Eddie solo can do a lot to elevate uh, weaker material, right? And I don't know if this pulled that yeah. off. Yeah, that would uh, – one of the – songs we talked about in an earlier show um was not digging the track at all and then eddie came in and saved it with a solo and i and i gave it a yay um this is not uh leaning towards a yay i'm just gonna say that right now it's a good solo it's a it's a good uh i don't want to say standard by numbers eddie van halen solo because what the hell does that mean but it's a it's a good solo it's just not a great solo now we got a minute 30 here let's see if this this saves the track for us From the inside, Mark Kamire. That that was a that was a thing we just listened to. Uh, your thoughts? Mm-hmm. It wasn't a song. <laughs> it was literally uh, some leftover tracks that they didn't have uh, a full lyrics for. They didn't have a, a plan for. They just had it. 
they needed to throw something on the album. The rest of the time, they're just dicking around. Um, I stand by what I said earlier. I think they just got wasted and decided, let's go in the studio now and just, I don't know, just do whatever. And uh, <laughs> first time producers like, yeah, yeah, okay, I can do that. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. It's it's cool. Um, that's what I think is happening here. Um, either that or they're just uh, trying to be really funny and it's not it's not funny <laughs> it, it, yeah. what are your thoughts oh fuck i jesus uh i i, I think I, I i kick things off so i'll i'll, I'll put in my, my vote right now and the question of course we ask every week is uh um is that what dreams are made of or is the dream over uh i'm saying Oh, this dream is over. Fuck this song. Oh, like like you said, they they had a groove. They had like one more track. They needed on the album. They had eight songs. We need nine. Uh, let let's just go in there and fuck around because none of these lyrics mean anything. Uh, literally, at one point, you just hear, "Hey Sammy, I found a hat and a pair of shoes. Are they yours?" Like th this song isn't anything. It's not. It's barely a song. It's a groove with some spoken word shit. And and Sammy, you know, sings and scats some stuff on it. It's overproduced. Um, th this kind of mars my impression of what I, I consider a great album. I know at the time, 5150 didn't get great reviews. Uh, Rolling Stone gave it a three out of five. I think that was one of its highest reviews. But in the years since, it's considered one of their best albums. And that's how I always remember it. But it's not for this song. And it's at the end of the album, maybe for a reason. They just tacked it on because like, like we got to fill five minutes here. Um, we're not going to do a cover maybe because David Lee, always, David Lee Roth always made us do the covers. We're not doing a cover. Let, let's just put this horse shit on there and, and hope people just, you know, just, just forget about it. And it's, it's forgettable. It's, it's like you said, it's not even really a song. Uh, so I can't give it a, a, a yes vote on this. Uh, to me, it was substandard and a poor indication of the Sammy Hagar era. I think I always remember Sammy's uh, contributions to be a little better than this. This song didn't do it for me. How about for you, Mark? It's a funny thing about dreams, but um, my my whole thing is uh, yeah, it's not a song. As I said, it's uh, it's it's them messing around, and there's nothing wrong with that if you, that's what you want to do. It's fine. I I have to imagine that they put in eight really strong tunes or at least they felt were super strong um and that's what they had in them um they're they're going into this album during a, a time of change things are things are different uh people are talking you know the the they're a huge band the press uh everybody's kind of looking at them going like how what what's your follow-up gonna be like what's that gonna sound like how how will you guys maintain your Van Halen-ness. How will you do it? And I got to imagine, because I know of the other tracks on this album, and several of them, if not all of them, I know are very solid. A couple of them were big hits. So, you know, a, a, a few out of eight strong songs, that's not bad. Um, but then they had this one. And this one, um, I, I take back what I said earlier. This is definitely not an intro song whatsoever. It's it is an outro, an outro of "Hey, we did it. We we got through all the shit. We got through all the. Let's just have fun, or even, let's not even have fun. Let's just I don't care. Let's get drunk and just celebrate. And it's hey, producer, hit record. And we're just gonna say some shit. And what's he gonna say? No. Uh, you know, you got the time, and then you got the you got the <laughs> the, the the music available. Might as well throw it in there. I agree with you, though. I really wish they had done a cover. I wish they had thrown a cover at the end of it. I have no idea what they would have done. Um, and I know that's Dave's thing, but even if you wanted to make a statement and say, hey, we're not doing that the thing that you're you're used to we're not doing our normal thing we're, we're trying to be different this time that's great awesome but that doesn't mean that you can't still have a little fun you know you can't still throw uh the the fans a bone throw yourself a bone because you probably had fun playing those covers you know it, it sounds like you did so i think it would have benefited i think but it, it is what it is and what it is is that uh inside is a little uh, is just not for me and it's not for you 
this is not a track. It is an outro at best, and that's what I have to. You know, think. and the Sammy Hagar era, they were not opposed to doing covers because uh, on their uh, uh, for unlawful tour, they did "Won't Get Fooled Again" uh, by the Who uh, brilliantly, yeah. and on this tour, they covered Led Zeppelin's "Rock and Roll." They didn't want to do a lot of David Lee Roth tunes on that tour, so they did a couple of Sammy tunes, like uh, mm-hmm. "I Can't Drive 55," of course. And there's only one way to rock, but they covered rock and roll on that. Like how fucking great would it have been if Van Halen put their cover of rock and roll on the end of this album? What a tremendous, I oh, that would have been that fantastic. Now. Instead we got this and so yeah, the, the groove is cool and the band is good, all that, but they're, they're yeah. you know, Sammy's trying to be funny and he's not coming off as funny and it just doesn't work. No. And, uh, Maybe the uh, him jumping in as Michael's playing, going like, what the hell is that? You know, maybe that was our indicator of, oh boy, you're not going to enjoy whatever this is. And I'm sure there might be people out there who think 5150 from top to bottom is just perfection, is rock and roll perfection. I think um, uh, uh, Mark Ellis might be one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I, I actually, I, I wish he was on the show so we could discuss it. Cause I would love to hear <laughs> his defense of inside, uh, maybe one day, but, but I don't know, man. He just, yeah, I, I don't have a lot to say about this. I'm kind of, I'm disappointed because you think 5150 is like, that's, you know, what a great Sammy album and the rest of the album is great. Let's maintain that. But why did you have to end so weakly? You know, I don't know. Yeah, just that's it. Really, kind of, as you said, it sort of kind of tampers my uh, my my thoughts on this album now. And, and that's like fifty one fifty is a great bummer. album. And my favorite Van Halen song yeah. of all time is on fifty one fifty. I'm not going to say it because we're going to cover it at some point. But my favorite Van Halen tune of all I time is on it. this record. It's not inside. I can tell you that much. <laughs> oh damn it there went my guess no i'm kidding uh no i i can't like i can't imagine this is anyone's favorite from this album even if you love 5150 from top to bottom i don't see how you love this one maybe you tolerate it maybe you give it a pass because you think 5150 is just you know supreme and that's awesome that's cool uh you know what let us know you should hit us up on the socials about that Corey. Do you have any final thoughts on Inside from the album 5150? I tell you, I'm just, again, I'm on the Wikipedia page here. I'm looking at the singles from 5150, and the second single from this album was Dreams, which we use in our voting uh, now for a song we like. The B-side of Dreams was Inside. So they liked this thing enough to put it on the B-side for Dreams, which I I find kind of surprising. Are there two versions of the song? (laughs) out there somewhere like is there or the were they just i i am baffled now this uh now this this has turned into like a a mystery i gotta solve we gotta find the the old 45 that was released in 86 may of 1986 with dreams as the a side and inside on the b side is this a different uh version of the song or was it what we just listened to tonight that's interesting we should reach out to this uh, to this producer of this album. He, you know, he was this was his first time. Like, I'm sure he he probably had to deal with a lot of shit during this. So I would I would love to talk to that guy, pick his brain, especially about this track oh, because he would have some stories. I'm back. Yeah, and I tell you, like, this is the first Van Halen album to go to number one. Um, it went platinum in a week, uh, according to Sammy Hagar. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, this was a hugely successful album, and, and they, they they felt strong enough about this material that they, they put it as the outro to the album, which I, it kind of baffles me a little bit. I mean, maybe as soon as you go platinum with your album, you can do no wrong. And you feel like you are pardon the pun on top of the world. And, and, and why not? You know, it's just like, you know what? We're, we're so confident in this. We're going to send out a B side of, (laughs) of our worst track and you're going to love it. Spoilers. No one loved it, but it's fine. It's fine. It didn't. It did not hurt the album sales. Apparently, okay. What, what did you say? It went like six times. Six platinum. times platinum. Yeah. Back in the day, and this is back when that actually meant something, kids. <laughs> you know, nowadays, whatever. But anyway, um, again, there's got to be somebody out there that really, really enjoys this track. And you know what? We want to hear from you. I want you to argue your case. 
you can hit us up on Twitter at podcast will rock and let us know. And if you want to contact us individually, Corey, where can the people find they you? They can find me at CD Marset on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, please, well, I'll put a poll up uh, like I did last week. I think this will be a regular thing. Please vote. Are you a fan of Inside? And if you are, uh, let us know what it, you know what about this song did it for you because it didn't exactly work for Mark and I. Uh, and there's still stuff to like in it. Even a bad Van Halen song still has redeeming qualities. But uh, holy cow, uh, Mark, where can they find you? <laughs> uh, you can find me at Mark the Bat on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, yeah, let's. I think we should do that. We should set up a rock and poll and. Uh, you you guys can tell us whether this song was was a or was it nay um tell us why i really want to know and even if you are just completely joking and you just send us this essay <laughs> as to why this song is so great i will be more than happy to read it because i will find that very entertaining that you had so much energy to put into that <laughs> But uh, but if you genuinely love it, yeah, do let us know. That's the show, you guys, and the podcast will rock. We are rocking another Van Halen tune uh, this week. It wasn't for us, but, you know, we, we rocked it nonetheless. And as Corey said, in every Van Halen track, there is a redeeming quality. There is something to to get psyched about. And I got psyched for the bass line. I got psyched for Eddie's solo. It wasn't a great solo, but it was a good solo. A good solo is better than no solo, right? Am I right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, and that's and that's why I don't do this show solo. I need Corey's input. I need his 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 wherewithal and his his good brain and his knowledge. And he keeps me on track instead of just ranting, because if you know my work, you know I love ranting. That's your brand. Any final thoughts, Corey? Uh, nope. <laughs> that is my uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to preface by saying we, we were going to have a special guest on here for our 10th episode extravaganza. Unfortunately, coronavirus is playing with everybody's schedules, and they couldn't make it on this week. Uh, but we are going to try and get them on next week, and I can't wait because they would have had a lot of fun, I think, talking about Inside. They would have hated it, but I think they would have had a lot of fun. I'm not going to tip our hand on who it is, uh, but it's a big yeah. name in the deep dive music podcast community, and I can't wait to get them on the show. Uh, but uh, if you'd like, uh, please check out our website. Check out our friends on the Deep Dive Podcasting Network. There's tons of great shows. If you're a Uriah Heap fan or a Chili Peppers fan or a Priest fan or a Maiden fan or an Aussie fan, or a Hawk Binge fan. Like there's, there's so many great shows out there and great podcasts. Check them all out. You'll find all the links on our website and pick up some merch. Why the hell not? Where, where the end the podcast will rock logo around. I know my kids are going to be walking around school wearing that and have all the kids go, what the hell is that? Uh, I'm going to be wearing it when I go check out uh, ZZ Top and uh, Alice Cooper and Foo Fighters this year. I got some concerts booked I'm going to, so I'll be wearing the wearing our colors with pride. And uh, please uh, continue to join us along this ride and interact with us. Let us know what you thought of Inside and any of our other shows. And uh, we're, we're happy to chat. We're happy to you know have other people on the show and go on this journey with us of experiencing the entire Van Halen catalog one song at a time. We're 10 episodes in. we got 100 10 to go and i'm looking forward to it absolutely and i'm looking forward to getting some merch because i love wearing merch, merch. that's going to be a fun time always a fun time talking about van halen listening to van halen always a fun time doing this show we are and the podcast will rock and we will rock you later later